Hey, what's going on guys? Well, today we're talking about the SOG Revolver. I had a, um, I had a viewer send me this as well as a couple other knives and they were just kind of thinning in their collection and wanted to send some gifts, which I greatly appreciate. This is a knife that I, I don't think I've ever would have purchased. Maybe like if I you know, saw a good deal on it, might've been curious enough to, uh, to try it. I've actually seen this before, just didn't give it too much thought. I didn't actively go out and try to get one. But uh, <laughs> I used this thing and I definitely have an opinion on it. That's why you're looking at it on a video right now. So first let's talk about the, uh, the sheath system here. We have a nylon sheath. You see SOG logo on there, right in the front. One thing SOG does very well is let you know it's their products. The SOG logo is everywhere on SOG products. Which is not a bad thing, I'll let you know. But uh, anyway, so you can see how it kind of sits in the sheath. All right, it doesn't snap in or anything like that. There is a retention strap that's Velcro, which does you know retain the knife fairly well. However, you know me, I'm not a fan of just Velcro. You gotta have a button snap on there. Um, although Velcro is easy, this one is wearing out already. All right, eventually, if it gets dirty, it's not going to retain this. And because there's no other way the knife stays in the sheath, it will literally fall out if you turn upside down, fall, whatever, and go flying. Okay, if that is not actually Velcro. So sheath, although the quality is good, huge miss right here. Definitely needs a button snap. If not, in addition to the Velcro, in replace of the Velcro. So on to the uh, knife itself. This is how this works. It's called a revolver because there is a saw blade. It's actually one solid blade, but half of it is your knife blade and half of it is the saw. So on the back here, you can see there's a release button. So it kind of blends into the handle here. So you push that. If I turn this sideways, you can see it's literally pivoting and lifting a pin. When you lift the pin, this freely moves. So now you can see the design here, one solid blade. All right, so just rotating in. And once this goes in, you have to lift this again because you can see the pins in the way. So you lift this up, let that go all the way in until it clicks. Now, here's my first issue. I didn't know right away that you had to lift the pin, so I did that a bunch of times. And what is that doing? That is smacking my sharp edge on the pin. Not good, right? <laughs> so design flaw number one. Um, design flaw number two is in either position, there's play. What that means is that the hole that's in the blades, okay, lift this up. Obviously you can see the hole, this is where the pin goes, so there's a hole in both blades. It doesn't matter if we have our regular blade out or our saw blade, the hole is just a little bit bigger than the pin. So we get some slop, some blade play. Now, maybe it sounds dramatic, it's, it's moving, clearly moving. So when I'm using the knife, the first thing I notice is a little bit of play there, which is kind of annoying, but it's, you know, it's not going to totally kill it for me. However, the handle is killer for me. Number one, there's finger grooves on here, right? So you first grab and you're like, oh, this is comfortable. It's very heavily textured, too textured for me. With bare hands and using both the knife and the saw, this got very uncomfortable, okay? It was too grippy, too textured, all right? It's actually kind of sharp in some of these angles. So that's something else that I, I didn't like. But the biggest thing for me is because this design is what it is, this plastic flexes, all right? That means when I got a good strong grip on this and I squeeze, I'm feeling the handle move. So I'm feeling the blade move a little bit, I'm feeling the handle move, and it's also uncomfortable. So um, yeah, and using both the blade, and more specifically the saw, because I'm using the saw pretty vigorously with the blade, cutting cardboard and paper, and cut some power cord as well. Not a huge issue really, but specifically with the uh, the saw blade here, um, that's where I had my issues because I'm, I'm cranking down on this thing. It's a very effective saw. The saw edge works very well on wood. It's a great wood saw. Okay, it does chew through the stuff, but at a cost. It's uncomfortable, flex in the handle, a little bit of blade play, and also the fact that this is always open. Consider it a fixed blade. That's how you have to treat it because obviously you can't fold it closed. Because as you fold the thing, it just opens up a new blade. So I love the idea of it. The idea is pretty cool. It's uh, certainly interesting, but uh, I don't know, it's somewhat of a fail to me. Now, something to note is these aren't terribly expensive. This one is called the, I'm trying to remember it. This is the seal, I believe. This one sells for 30 and we have a combo edge, like kind of seal pup style blade, okay, right? See, it's uh, hollow grounds. 
our uh, SOG serrations. It did come sharp. This is in a, uh, a 5CR15 MOV. It is made in China and it is a soft steel, so it's not going to hold a fantastic edge or anything. Um, I, I would imagine if you're getting something like this, it's not because you just want a backup saw. You're probably using the saw mostly, but it's nice to flip your saw around. Now you have a regular utility knife edge you know, to use for whatever you need to use it for. Um, but to me, it doesn't really excel in either fashion. And that often happens when you have something that's multi-purpose. You're taking away you know, the effective, basically the effectiveness of each individual tool. For example, something with 10 tools, each individual tool might not be as strong or as purposeful as if you just had one dedicated tool. Perfect example, screwdrivers, right? Everyone's got screwdrivers in their multi-tools. Yeah, they work, but none of them work as good as a dedicated single screwdriver. They're never as comfortable, they're never as convenient. So it's just, it's one of those things, you know? Buying a dedicated folding saw or a fixed saw is gonna be better. But I can say the actual saw performance was good. It's just as a knife, it's kind of like meh, you know? But uh, yeah, 4.75 inches on our, our blade length as well as a saw. You know, it's the same length obviously because it's going in the same handle here. It is uh, Tainai coated, which is titanium nitride. All right, so that coating did not come off in my usage at all. All right, did use it pretty rough. Whole thing weighs six ounces. And uh, the seal is 30 bucks, but the Hunter version is 20. Now, if you've never seen that, the Hunter, same exact thing. I don't believe the Hunter is a uh, Tainai coated. I think it's just, you know, uncoated, you know, uh, maybe a satin finish blade or whatever, but it's a wider blade and it has the gut hook on the top here. Okay, I don't know, I don't recall offhand if it's uh, uh, straight edge or partially straight or not, but I do know that one has the gut hook and it is a little bit cheaper. All right, so if you're kind of curious about it anyway, maybe you get the Hunter version for 20 bucks, maybe you spend the full 30, it's not incredibly expensive, so it is an interesting piece, but like I said, the, um, the biggest thing for me, I would imagine, is that this would be your dedicated saw. You have a, a purpose, a need to have saw, like may, maybe you're just trying to get firewood, maybe you wanna have a good multifunctional tool for the campsite. This will be totally fine if you're doing backyard camping or, or light camping, adventuring, whatever. You're not like deep, deep in the woods where your life has to rely on your tools. If you have accessibility to some help, if something goes wrong, this would be a cool little camp companion. You can cut some tree branches off that are dead, process your wood, use the fixed blade. I would not baton with this, so let's get that out of the way. But you can definitely still use the, uh, the blade portion here, maybe for food prep or something. So, you know, it's a cool little knife slash saw combo. It's just, uh, it doesn't excel in either one as a knife or a saw. There are better knives and there are better saws, even in the, the price range. But it's still an interesting piece. So yeah, it's just overall for me, it just, it was uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, the, the little bit of play, it's just, eh. like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't blown away by it. But still a fun little, little tool nonetheless and still purposeful for some people. So yeah, there is the, the SOG revolver. Once again, thank you very much to the viewer who had sent this to me. It was a pleasure in, uh, you know, in using it. I never would have known, you know, otherwise. So I do appreciate it a great deal. So that's it. If you guys happen to have this, or even if you don't have it, let me know your opinions on it. You'll probably agree with some of my assessments, even not using the knife. You can see the potential issues there. But uh, yeah, biggest downside for me is just comfort. It just was not a comfortable knife. I didn't feel confident in using it, both the saw or the knife portion. But that being said, you know, for uh, for twenty or thirty dollars. The saw did chew through wood very well. It's a good, you know, saw blade pattern or saw tooth pattern. So uh, yeah, it's a good wood saw. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.